video is probably going to be so long that you'll be able to watch my hair drying. <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather from Hia Booktubes, and this is a Kristen Ashley author guide. I made one author guide before, it was Jessica Godziella, and I don't really watch author guides, but I have read 56 Kristen Ashley books, and I wanted to make it. <laughs> So these are all the Kristen Ashley books that are currently out, what I've read and loved, where I think maybe you should start or what are good starting places and you know what maybe you should pick up next. So Kristen Ashley has a very particular writing style. If you do not like her writing style, you will not like any of her books, okay? Her authorial voice really comes through. She has a recognizable style. And if that bugs you, they're all going to bug you. Also, she writes alphas, uh, like very much alpha alphas. So there's a good chance that if you don't like alphas, her writing's not for you. If you do love alphas, then she's probably going to be your jam. But definitely leans hard into the alpha. If you don't like that at all anyways, you're not going to like it. Also, her books are often over 500 pages, often over 600 pages, so books are much longer. One of the reasons why I love her books is because her couples really communicate and they tend to deal with things together. Even if there is a third act breakup or a late book conflict, they're going to deal with that. and. A lot of times you're going to have some significant conflict within the first 40% of the book and the couple might decide that they are not interested in being with each other but then they're going to resolve that and once they get over a huge conflict they're almost always going to stay together and communicating and you know doing what couples should do for the rest of the book. So even though maybe someone's going to get kidnapped or shot or what have you the couple themselves are going to remain solid and that's something that I just love reading about. <laughs> so you get a lot of happy couple times, a lot of dialogue, a lot of interesting conversations. You get a lot of found family and friends aspects. I feel like she does a good job having strong side characters and characters that you really care about their relationship with the main character and love interest and they're not just you know paper cutouts meant to move the story along but they feel like real characters and yeah I just I kind of love everything about it. Hi so I'm editing and I wanted to mention a couple of things that I know this I don't say when I'm talking about Kristen Ashley and I want to. One is I know that her covers look like women's fiction or genre fiction or like they might not be that steamy or be that focused on the romance, but they are. There's plenty of steam in these books. They're very focused on the couple, even though they're long and they do have lots of relationships with like friendships and found family and family aspects. So you feel like those characters are real. It's very focused on the romance. It is a steamy romance book. It is all the things that I love. <laughs> Very focused on the romance, on their interactions, their conversations, their steam, all those things that you would expect in my shorter romance books are present in this. Don't let the covers fool you. Kristen Ashley's books are not women's fiction. This is the author guide and if there's a book that I really don't like I'll be honest about that as well. <laughs> So where I started and where I think is a great place to start with Kristen Ashley is The Hookup, which is Moonlight and Mother Oil number one. It is a duet. The first book is about the older sister and the older brother, and then his younger brother and her younger sister are the second book. So you have two sets of siblings that get together. In The Hookup is a one night stand. You are opening on the front page the morning after the one night stand and it kind of talks about the meeting and stuff and he has been living alone for quite a while since his ex-living girlfriend left him. Everyone knows that they were meant to be. He's never going to love again and then she comes into town and he is smitten. He decides that no he can't do this and she's like okay <laughs> and then uh changes his mind and then they are in it to win it. <laughs> for the rest of the book. I have reread this one. It is one of my all-time favorites. The book that introduced me to Kristen Ashley. I had absolutely no idea what I was getting into when I picked it up, but I loved it. 
so incredibly much. There is some romantic suspense, which there is romantic suspense in most of Kristen Ashley's books, but it's small town. I have a couple different reasons why I think it's a really good place to start. One is where I start, so I know. <laughs> Two, it is just a duet and obviously you can read it as a standalone because you get that couple's happily ever after so it's a good place to start without feeling like you might need to finish a longer series. And also the alpha is not as alpha-y <laughs> as some of her other alphas are. So I would say if the hookup, if Johnny is too much for you, <laughs> you're probably not gonna like any of her other heroes but I think that's a really good place to kind of get a feel for her style without being the deep end. I will say that there's a lot of grief for parents and cancer in this duology so be aware of that but I personally found it to be very sweet and poignant and I just shed a tear or two but not trauma and grief just for the sake of trauma and grief. And then The Slow Burn is the second book. Her sister is a single mom so you get a single mom romance and I really love seeing the difference in the sibling dynamics and you know their relationship and how maybe they weren't as much of screw-ups or goofballs as their older siblings viewed them as and things like that. You have a single mom who is trying to do it all on her own and it's not working out and he has to be like look your mom did it all on her own because she didn't have a choice. You have a support system and people that want to help you that does not make you weak <laughs> to accept the love that people are trying to give you by helping you with things. Again, content warning for cancer, but really just a message that spoke to my heart. <laughs> I'm such a sucker for it. I hate when people refuse to get help from the people that love them. I just wish that we didn't have that trauma and that we could, you know, get over it. <laughs> Then another good place to start is an older series. The first book came out in 2008, but that is Rock Chick. It is one of her more popular series. She's definitely well known for it. Rock Chick is a nine book series. This is heavily romantic suspense. So all of the guys are in like a private investigative agency and they, um, they do commando things. And <laughs> another thing that I love about Kristen and Ashley's characters is they're almost all 30 plus. She often does 40s and 50s main characters and I really like that. This first one is best friend's brother and she's been in love with her best friend's brother since she was a teenager, like a itty bitty thing. Now she's 30 and uh, she gets herself in a mess and he swoops in and is like, I'm done waiting. <laughs> I will say, I think it's book eight. One of the main characters does get raped. So I would be aware of that because it definitely took me by surprise, but this is over the top shenanigan romantic suspense the women get themselves in all sorts of pickles that like they easily could have avoided but they're not so uh, a lot of lovable characters i will say that there is a band in this that gets started that does have the g slur in it again this was a while ago i personally would prefer that she changed it i guess just know that know that Connected to Rock Chick, but you can read these out of order. I certainly did. Mystery Man is Dream Man 1. This is a four book series. It is another like investigative agency and you see his commandos. I think it's, I think these are the commandos. I don't know. And you see them in lots of other series. Also, you see the president of a motorcycle club that we get a series for. So it's a really good series that connects quite a few of her series. Mystery Man, <laughs> I'm still so confused about so many things. When I started reading this book the first time, I legitimately thought he was a vampire <laughs> because it's like he only comes at night and he just like appears in her house and it's, it's something all right. He's not a vampire. <laughs> But um, I just, I don't know, it is over the top. Everyone wants to be with her. It's, it's wild, but I still have like an excellent time. <laughs> in fact, all of the other men in the series that get their own books, they wanted to get with her in this book. So quite interesting. Then there is Quiet Man. This is a novella, so it's a good one to try because I think it's under 200 pages. And like I said, most of her books are significantly more. So this is Quiet Man is a bodyguard to a stripper 
and the stripper is the sister of one of the main characters in the Rock Chick series and the bodyguard works for the guy in Mystery Man and this is a bridge novella between the Dream Man series and the Dream Team series so she kind of meets all of his friends and decides to set them up with her friends. She does have a guy who's threatening violence against her and like a stalker and is escalating which is why she has the bodyguard so content warning for that. There's quite a few content warnings in these books that I'm not mentioning so I'm just kind of mentioning a couple off the top of my head. Know that content warnings do apply, they're all romantic suspense. Then Dream Maker is the first in the dream team so all of the main characters are strippers and all of the love interests are commandos. This is four books, possibly more. It seems like either we're going to have another series tie into this one or she's going to continue this one, but um, I'm not 100% sure which way it is, but there are some storylines that are not finished out. Then we have The Gamble, which is one of my personal favorites, and this is Colorado Mountain number one. This is a small town series that is seven books long. A little less romantic suspense in this series. It does still appear but it's definitely less than Rock Check, Dream Man, and Dream Team. Those series have more romantic suspense in them. The Gamble is a American who has lived in England for years, goes on a vacation to decide if she wants to break up with her fiance and she goes to stay at this cabin and the owner is there and he's not supposed to be and the cabin wasn't supposed to be rented so he sends her packing and she is sick and she never makes it down the mountain to the hotel and he calls down and there's a winter storm and she never made it so he goes and he finds her and then he nurses her back to health and they're like snowed in in the cabin and all this stuff and I love it. Again, I've read this multiple times. This is one of my personal favorites. I would like to reread other books in the series, but this one I have reread. Just excellent small town goodness. <laughs> then we have For You, which is The Berg, number one. This is a six book series, heavier on the romantic suspense. I actually did DNF this first book because there was an axe wielding serial killer and he creeps me out so much <laughs> that I was just like, I can't do this. I am so freaked out right now. <laughs> so I uh, mission accomplished. It was very creepy. I was too creeped out. <laughs> I did read a couple other books in this series. I have not read the whole series. In fact, this is the first series that I'm talking about that I have not read every single book. Then I have Night, which is Unfinished Hero number one. This is a five book series. These are kind of anti-hero love interests, so they don't tend to operate inside the law. <laughs> Again, I've read several books in this series, but not all of the books in the series. This first guy, he has made a lot of his money off of prostitution and he does provide a safe environment for sex workers, but be aware that it's going to be a conflict and uh, part of the storyline. He's very rich and his younger brother throws a party in his apartment and she's there and that's how she meets him. He's not thrilled. <laughs> Also in this series, Deacon, so heartbreaking. I cried so much with this book. However, if you want to read an alpha man who is a switch in the bedroom, I thought that this one was really good. Then I have Own the Wind, which is chaos number one. This is a six book series plus several novellas. This is the Motorcycle Club series. The president of this was back in the Dream Man series. This, I have read the first three or so. So good, but so emotional. <laughs> I was scared to continue. Um, so when those books came out, I didn't yet. I might, but honestly, scared, scared. So just know that <laughs> you, you, first of all you've got all of the violence and all of the uh issues that can happen with motorcycle clubs there's definitely their motorcycle club ends up going to war and like there's a lot of casualties and things like that but also just emotionally <laughs> they the these couples man they really put me through it <laughs> Then Still Standing, which is Wild West MC number one. The second book is out on the 6th of December. So I will be reading it 
like right when this video comes out. This is the president of this motorcycle club, which is I think related to the chaos one somehow. I don't remember, but I hated this hero for like the first 70%. So know that. Definitely content warnings for rape and domestic abuse and things like that. I hated this hero and if it had been any of their author I would have DNF'd. I ended up loving the final 30% of the book but um, know that. <laughs> Definitely don't start with this one. Then I have After the Climb which is River Rain number one. She wrote this in the initial lockdown. It was free for quite a while. It is now traditionally published and is a series that she is currently working on. So the next book will be coming out in 2023. There are four books out so far. This is not romantic suspense. So this is um, this is actually celebrity. So this series I would really recommend that you need to read in order. There are events mainly the suicide of a loved one that create kind of the where we're going. Okay, so it's important information to have. I would not recommend reading the series out of order, even though each book is about its own couple. So this first one, she is a world famous actress and is divorced from her husband because he cheated on her, her second or third husband. And her best friend, in the world committed suicide he was like a tech billionaire and in his will he insists that she goes and sees their other like childhood friend that was her first love her first everything and he runs a very successful outdoors store then in the leathers that he leaves reveals that he broke them up right so they have been broken up for like 30 something years they have adult children they've had their own lives they're both single again and their best friend not only are they grieving him not only is he gone but also they find out that they're really angry with him so um, an emotional <laughs> roller coaster but that is kind of the setup for the series and then you see their kids and their employees and their exes getting their own books really just an interesting found family especially with the celebrity aspect i am ready for some of the books that have been set up that we haven't gotten yet i don't really like celebrity and of course i love this one if you do like celebrity and maybe don't like romantic suspense this might be a good option for you but even if you do love romantic suspense and you don't love celebrity this also might be a good option for you so also the second book in the series, Chasing Serenity, I definitely feel like is like Alexis from Schitt's Creek. I feel I feel like that's a vibe. <laughs> then I have The Girl in the Mist, which is Misted Pines number one. This is the only book that is out. The next book is coming out in January 2023. And this is a romantic thriller. So the pacing is different. There's definitely quite a bit of suspense, but it's not romantic suspense. It's romantic thriller. You do get that HEA. It is a romance, but romantic thriller, fascinating. <laughs> I thought that this was just so good. So you have like a actress who is a world famous author and this uh, single dad who was like a FBI profiler is her neighbor and he's supposed to help keep her safe from a stalker that she has and then there's also a serial killer going around town and that's not connected to her stalker so there's multiple different cases in this book but wow so fascinating they both have adult children his youngest is a teen girl so she really bonds with her but I thought that the reveals and everything very interesting so really looking forward to the second book and honestly the first ever book that I read that was marketed as a romantic thriller so I uh I was a big fan I really like to see the ways that she changed it from her usual romantic suspense it was interesting and these characters are in their 50s I want to say so on the older side. And I have The Will, which is Magdalene number one. This is a three book series. And again, with older main characters, the first one, she is a fashion girly. Her father was very abusive and her grandma was her entire world. And we open up at the funeral of her grandmother. <laughs> uh, my, my feelings. And she 
is left in the will to this guy that she's never heard of and never seen. And turns out that he was incredibly close. He and his kids were incredibly close to her grandma and she never heard about him. And she's just confused and upset and judgy. And then we get a couple other couples with some of the more famous houses in this town, but it takes place in Maine, I believe, which is a lot of her books take place in Colorado. So a little bit of a change of scenery for her, but I have read this multiple times also. <laughs> then Complicated is a standalone, so it would, might be a good option. It's a little bit older, but might be a good option. You have a sheriff and a new single mom who um, comes into town and they get off on the wrong foot. <laughs> then the first book that I'm going to talk about that I have not read as a standalone is Fast Lane and this was inspired by her reading Daisy and the Six. So this is her version of it, older main characters, and I believe that there's an HEA. I think it's a romance. I don't think it's not, but I have not read it. Let me know if I should. Rockstar girl broke up the band type story. And another standalone that I have not read is Play It Safe. It's small town, long separation. That's all I know about it. And the last contemporary is another standalone that I have not read and that is Heaven and Hell. This I believe has an abusive ex-husband who dies. And um, that's all I know. Then, a series that I have not read at all is The Deep End, which is Honey Number One. It's three books and it is alphas are submissive in this uh, like sex club. And that's all I know about it. I, from time to time, wonder if I should pick it up, but I have not because I'm not really into submissive men in the bedroom. So that's kind of what stopped me. Then her fantasy series is Fantasyland and the first book is Wildest Dreams. This is a portal fantasy, a parallel universe. So the main character is from our world and she switches places with her doppelganger in this fantasy world. And that doppelganger was a princess who's also a lesbian, I believe, and uh, was supposed to get married that day. She doesn't know that. <laughs> so she's there because she wants to see the doppelgangers of her dead parents. I personally feel like that's not a great reason but whatever also do be aware in this book specifically her birth control gets messed with and in that society the men decide on whether you have kids or not and it's actually like a huge betrayal to be not giving your royal husband an heir when you're supposed to be so definitely a clash in culture and he believes that she's in the wrong and she obviously believes that he's in the wrong so that's a big conflict be aware of that that, that happens. Also the third book in this, Golden Dynasty, is Cal Drogo and Khaleesi. That's what it is. Uh, huge content warning for domestic abuse actively on page especially for a side character. There is some issues with it as well between the couple that does get fixed but is the side character that is the reason I have not reread because it's very heavy. I do really want to reread this book. I thought that it was the perfect Cal Drogo and Khaleesi fanfic basically but that uh, side story of this domestic abuse that we are witnessing and not able to interfere in because of the culture was was quite heavy so it's a five book series plus a novella I did DNF the fifth book simply because I think because I read them all back to back <laughs> So I was like 3,000 pages into it, I think, at this point. And so that's the only reason why I DNF'd. I do consider picking it back up from time to time is about a villainess and her hero is from our world. So all of the main characters have been from our world and the heroes have been from this fantasy land and it's reversed in that one. So then... The beginning of everything is The Rising, book number one. There are four books in this. This takes place in the same world as Fantasyland, so it's a fantasy romance. However, um, very interesting. Number one, longer books. Number two, you do have to read all four books to get to the whole story because this is a many, many, many multi-POV fantasy book and the books are basically just the continuation of the story. So you don't get one couple's HEA in book one and another couple's HEA in book two. You're just getting 
their stories. So I read the first two, again, like 1500 pages into it, right? Still like in the middle of the story. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna pick up the next one. I do kick around to picking it up and I very well might. But just know if you're not really into fantasy romance already, this one I would not start with. Very long, a little bit confusing. You've got lots of POVs and sometimes you're like, why do I care about your POV? Because it hasn't tied in yet. So not only do you have the eight main characters, the, um, you know, the main characters and their love interest, that's eight. And then you get lots of side characters POVs. So there's a lot going on and they know that they have to get married to prevent the rising, but they don't realize that they have to like actually love each other. So where I'm at, <laughs> at the end of book two, they're finding that out and it's like, oh no, cause we might have done some damage that we can't undo at this point now. Obviously, I assume that they do and do it, but I don't know because I haven't read book three. So know that if you love the Fantasyland series, maybe jump into The Rising, but by no means should you start either with Kristen Ashley or with Fantasy Romance in this series, okay? This is for, this is advanced. <laughs> I'm just a beginner. <laughs> then Paranormal Until the Sun Falls from the Sky, the three, book number one, this is a trilogy and each book is about its own couple. The first book is about a vampire and he is going to have his fade mate even though it is illegal. <laughs> so that's interesting. I never did read book two because I was scared. It's about werewolves. Um, so I have only read the first book in the series, but it was an excellent vampire book and I kind of wanted to continue. I heard that it wasn't really that bad and I was scared for no reason. <laughs> then, Three Wishes um, is a standalone and it is the only Kristen Ashley book that I have read that I actively hate. So I'm just going to tell you right now, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I did not like it. This is, uh, the family has a genie and he's basically a family member, but he can give wishes and they've mostly saved their wishes, but she uses one. One was used for her because her parents were infertile and she uses one for the love of her life. And um, yeah, here's the thing. There were so many conflicts in this book and I didn't like any of them. Some of them were really horrific. And especially the final one, I was just like, this is stupid. This is pointless. Absolutely not. <laughs> And at that point, our main character had already been through so much that I was just like, why are we doing this to her? So her parents die in the book. She is a single mom. She and the love interest were both lied to and he doesn't know that they have a daughter and she assumes that he rejected her, like heavily rejected her and has been, you know, doing her best to take care of her child. And then they find out that she is a child and the family hates her and he hates her. And it's just like, you suck so much because you don't even know what she's gone through. <laughs> uh, it was rough. It was rough. And the final conflict just nail in the coffin. So I don't recommend this one. I do not. I was not a fan. It was on my worst books of the year list. If you really want to hear the full spoiler rant. Then Summer's Gate House is Ghosts and Reincarnation number one. This is a five book series. I have not read this series. Let me know if I should. <laughs> Obviously it's about ghosts. The love interest is a ghost, I believe. Then Matilda Super Witch. This is Matilda's Book of Shadows number one. This is two books. They have been written years apart. The first book was written a long time ago. The second book was written more recently. I DNF the first book. There's journal entries and all sorts of stuff. I'm not really into that writing style. I was bored. I didn't care. Also, there's a love triangle in the first book that is not resolved in the first book. I have heard that is resolved in the second book, but um, it was like a witchy... Sabrina-ish book that I really didn't care about at all. Uh, yeah, and that's it. That's all the Chris Ashley <laughs> backlist right now. Are there any books that I haven't read that maybe I should for sure prioritize and or do you love Chris Ashley? Are you looking to get started with her? Where are you going next? What book do you want to pick up? 
Uh, do you have authors like Kristen Ashley to recommend for me? If you love Kristen Ashley, I think you might love Jessica Godziella, who I also have an author guide for. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. That's why I made it. I hope it's helpful. So thanks so much for watching. Bye.